this space. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out on this beautiful. <laughs> the sun was out before. The sun was out before. So, um, but I thank you. Um, I, I, there are several ways I thought about this talk. Um, we'll see how it actually unfolds. Um, I, I'm a painter, and I'm a worker. I, the process of painting is something that is so important to me. The work is about that process. Um, so flocking is an element that I think I really have to address. As a small child, I had a, an aunt who had this flocked vintage wallpaper. It was a lime green and olive green and really quite beautifully hideous. It was, I remember just being like attracted to it and wanting to touch it. I mean, I grew up in a house with cream walls and brown carpet, and it was a beautiful home, but I couldn't believe that someone would put this on the wall. <laughs> and then somewhere when I was starting to work with the fluorescent paint, I had walked into like a scrapbooking store and I saw a little jar of flocky and I was like, that's an option? <laughs> so, okay, so I did some research and I uh, found out about what flocking is, how it's used. Um, there's rayon flocking, which is more of a, um, you would use it on like greeting cards. And then there's nylon flocking, which is light fast. It's not gonna lose the color. It's used in industrial purposes. Um, weather stripping is flocked to give you sort of an idea. Um, and then it's also used in, you know, by the design industry. So, um, And then I had to go through the process of how does it work. I tried to hand apply it, where I actually paint the glue and then sprinkle the flock on the surface. That does not work at all. <laughs> don't, don't try that at home. Because um, what happens, the fibers sort of fall into the glue sideways. So it's lumpy, and you don't get that sort of smooth surface, that smooth, even surface. So I purchased a machine that's um, an electrostatic machine. It's a box with a small little motor. Um, it has a cord that has an alligator clip that grounds. You put some metal under the paper. You ground the, pap you ground the metal, the paper's on top, and then you, out of the box there's another cord that attaches to a long sort of, I'll call it a sort of, a wand of sorts with a basket at the end, and the fibers go into that basket. And so now I'm hand painting the glue, and when I uh, turn the machine on, it sprays the flocking onto the surface of the glue, and because it's electrified, it stands on end, so you get a nice even surface. But uh, um, the flocking how, how is- How did you figure that out, sir? Just research, yeah, just research. I didn't like what I was getting when I was working with the um, hand application, and I knew it wasn't something I could do because it would just ruin the work. You know, just so, you know, research and so that's the flocking. And then vegetables. You know, I grew up in a garden. I was always in my grandmother's garden, my parents' garden. Um, you know, we come from a family that canned and cooked, and you know made everything from scratch, jam, et cetera. So it's just something that sort of informs, you know, it's just been part of my history. So. Any questions? <laughs> Sarah, how does the layering work? What is the okay. Very good question. Of <laughs> Thank you. Well, I find the image that I want to work with first, and then I draw the um, object out on the paper, just the vegetable forms, usually the, the weeds and the flocking are one of the last elements. So I hand paint the fluorescent pink vegetables first, and they're highly rendered until those are finished. And then I protect them, I mask the forms with a, a frisket. There's a paper frisket, so I actually sort of just cover the pink areas and hand cut around the background forms, and then hand paint a liquid <coughs> frisket, which is almost like a, it would be like liquid rubber. Um, and then I paint the backgrounds. So there are times when I'm painting the backgrounds, because several times there'll be five or six different um, versions of the background, like, oh, gold doesn't work, or the silver's too dark, or, you know, so I'm layering. A lot of times you don't see the image and you forget what's even there because it's just metallic. Um, and then I carefully take off the frisket, carefully, and then, um, after that, 
that's done, I look at it and I see, you know, how can I use flocking? Is flocking um, going to work in this? Not all of my paintings, local oysters, doesn't have flocking. So I just, is flocking going to work? If so, what color and how do I want to do it? And something that I also have experienced, um, experimented with is um, I do have a silkscreen studio in my basement, so I, I have been trying to work with the silkscreen process with the flocking, but I haven't been able to sort of get that to, to work yet. I'm still working on that. Where, are you, where is the process of the burst happening? Where is that happening? Um, when I first came up with the starburst, it was when you're um, a summer afternoon and you look one direction into the sun and you get that sort of starburst kind of effect. That's where that actually came from. But the, the, in, the, in the mechanical process, Um, that would be sort of the second layer, the second layer, if I'm actually getting your question correctly. Right. Because yeah. you, your first is the vegetable, mm -hmm. the second is the flocking. Yes. And then the third is the... No, the third is the flocking, I apologize. Oh, okay. The second is the metallic, because after you use the flocking, the fibers are everywhere, and as much as I try to clean off the surface, when you paint, after you get little bits of, you know, and then right. the painting looks dirty. So it's not something I... I once I flock, I'm usually finished. Yes? You talk about the color, loving the color, and it's been fun, and your Beverly's wallpaper yeah. being wonderfully outrageous to use the Beverly. Um, do you get, have, is there any sense of irradiation or chemical, you know, chemistry gone wrong? Uh, for you, or is, is that uh, up to the viewer to decide if they want it there? You know, I think it's up to the viewer. However, I do appreciate <coughs> and support, you know, organic farming, local, you know, the idea that people are putting those chemicals on their food and eating it, I think is, you know, silly. <laughs> I think it's just silly. So I don't mind that people sort of assume that about my work. I think it's just a byproduct. It's not. How do I do the compositions? Well, I play with them. Sometimes I'll do a sketch to see if I really like it, but usually I just kind of jump in to the painting. And it's actually a really good question because I, recently I've been thinking I need to do more sketches, more studies, because the work takes so long that if I could really play with composition when it's on a small scale and figure out those issues, I might be able to get through the larger paintings quicker because I'm not solving the problems as I go on a big scale. Um, well, it depends on the piece. Mm -hmm. The more flocking. The more, the more flocking yeah. probably is going to add more time to it, but size as well. The, um, yeah. That was six to seven months. But mm -hmm. of course, I was working on other things. Mm -hmm. You know, um, six months on the red, you know, the red cabbage, and, and maybe three or four on this one. Mm -hmm. It really just depends on what's going on. So what's next? Where are you what's going from next? here? What's next? Great question. <laughs> I actually want to, it comes back to your question about the studies. I want to do some studies um, that are, I guess, a series of smaller paintings that have to do more with mark making, because I, I really like paintings that you can see where the artist's brush has been. You know, I like the drips. These are all very drippy and messy on the outsides, and then I cover up those drips. <laughs> Would you ask me say that? How, how do you do that? Well, because I'm painting all of the pinks first, mm -hmm. I don't worry about edge. I just paint because the metallic is going to trump the, the drip. So I think I would like to see drips in some of the leaves or some more mark making. Now, we'll see if that works. Out. <laughs> so when you're working, do you work, always work with it up on the wall? Very good question. I work in a very small studio space. It's a, a very small bedroom. It's maybe 8 by 10, 9 by 12. It's not very big. I have a very long table, and I actually have, I physically look at them on the wall and decide what I want to do, and then I get it down, and I, you know, I have to lay it across the table, and I'm almost working on it like a blanket. It's just sort of carefully, you know, draped over the table, and however I can get to it. It's a thin table, so I can kind of work 
around it and then we've got a 360 kind of manner on either side. There are a few areas that are kind of difficult to get to, but yes. Have you been looking at Japanese screens? Because this one in particular with the corn and the silver background reminds me of them. You know, I love I love Japanese screens. I do. I can't say that I would look at it as an exact, you know, influence, but I do think it's beautiful and I have all of the Japanese art, I like the flatness and how they read, sort of, you know, part of what I want to do is it, I enjoy the flatness of the paper. Well, some of them have really organic mm -hmm. material on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen some with like gold and that red serosia. Yeah, beautiful. And yeah. And peonies and poppy, yeah. Yes? Um, are you gonna, are you thinking about any other insects? <coughs> I miss your bees. Oh, I do. <laughs> I do have a series of work that were um, bees, honeybees. Um, and the bees were flocked and mm -hmm. the wings were the pink. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. I you know, I think right now it's just plant forms. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> have you taught flocking to your students? To my students? Yeah. Um, I have actually showed them mm -hmm. how to do it, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You have to wear a respirator. It's sort of a dangerous so process. So something that you can do. So do you wear a respirator in your Tineo's studio? No, I actually do it in my basement. And in the summer, I actually have a, a covered um, carport, and I do it outside. It's preferable to do it outside because it's a mess. It really is a mess. Yes? How long have you been doing this? How long have I been doing this work? About seven years. Good question. But before that, as a young, yeah, tell us about your education and when you started painting. Well, I started painting. I was a CCAD student. Um, I graduated in 1994 and made art for a couple years and discussed going to graduate school, got into graduate school, and then they called me like, are you coming? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just was in that crisis where I didn't want to paint with oil paint anymore. I didn't like the smell. It was toxic. Um, and that's when I stopped painting for that period of time. But happy on painting. so much local art too that I love. Um, it's off the top of my head, William Mark Bradford is the only thing that's you know popping out but yes. Um, what's the did you have any surprises when you went when you jumped up in scale um, that you didn't expect? I mean obviously scale itself is, a, is an issue, but was there anything unique about doing something this large that kind of took you by surprise that was challenging or, or, or rewarding? Well, I I love the scale. Like I like I like work that when I go into it, I, it surprises me. And I, I really kind of want to surprise myself. So, or why do it? So the scale um, I think just made it so much more impactful. And I think that's why I want to go even bigger if I can. Yes. So her question about composition made me start questioning how you decide how close to go in. Which then made, made me realize that some of these could actually be read as almost portraiture. Yeah, they, Do you feel it that way? Yeah, they, they probably could. I, I actually have thousands of photographs on my computer, and I'll just go through them until one just pops. And usually I'm working directly from a photograph or two photographs. So this painting is two, two to three separate photographs of Brussels sprouts that I kind of had to work together and then a couple different forms of corn. Um, but I also on that one wanted it to kind of just be a weedy, unkept garden, because gardens aren't very neat. They're usually sort of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> they're kind of all so, yeah. um, Being a photographer, I'm kind of interested in how you worked with the photograph. Was it in a very traditional kind of projected on a screen? And um, I 
do project the um, silhouette. But you'll notice if you get up really close that uh, if you ever look at a zucchini plant, the veins don't look like that. <laughs> then it's not a, this one is not um, rendered as a, I paint in the vein as I want to see it or how it might work. So, you know, and some yeah, are more literal and others are, because I, I just don't have the patience really <laughs> to kind of just be like, I do and I, I actually have the patience obviously. Yeah, I, I should say that. <laughs> no, no, no. But it's more of the feeling of, well, this is where I want the brush to go now. You know, and it makes it a little more, um, I don't know, maybe intuitive that I just sort of follow where it wants to go. Would you tell everyone about your painting at CSG, the size oh, of the commission? Yeah. Um, Rebecca Bell asked, invited me to, um, to do a proposal for the Columbus School for Girls new um, cafeteria, that whole wing, and mm -hmm. you have been in that. But um, I made maybe eight to ten panels of wallpaper on a white iridescent background. It's also fluffed. And it's um, just one wall in their cafeteria. And it's really, it really is a beautiful piece. I really am excited every time I'm able to walk in there or someone posts it on Facebook <laughs> with their kids in front of it, which is fun. Yes? Yeah. I got to see it. And when I looked at that painting, it kind of reminded me of it. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. So you saw it.